Hey all, welcome back to another long awaited video. Today I'm going to be finishing off a building that was one of the very first structures I created way back when I created the facade in episode three. Today, however, I'm going to be building it from the ground up and completely finishing the exterior. But firstly, I managed to get my hands on a whole bunch of these small black pyramid pieces, which I used to replace all of the cheese wedges that I previously used around the edges of these train tracks. And that enabled me to create the look that I had previously envisioned as you normally don't have a lot of these kind of pieces lying around in this quantity. If you've ever wondered what these are for, I get a lot of them in my local area in real life and they're really just there to deter people from walking on sections of track or even near track that you don't want people going in because it's a high risk area. Now I know that my city has a little bit of a unique kind of situation as the buildings are already unrealistically close but having these here just helps reel back some of the realism in the city. With that out of the way, I finally set to work putting together this building and you can just see the foundation here of where I'll be placing it in the city. And you can also see I added a little garden section in there, which we'll take a closer look at later on. But firstly, I did need a few pieces to finish this off. Although I had the majority of the bricks, a lot of the masonry bricks and smaller detail parts I didn't have, as this uses a lot of colors and building techniques that I haven't really experimented with in the past so you can see here I just unboxed all of those pieces that I needed and then I got to work. The reason I decided to scrap the facade that I made before and rebuild it from the ground up effectively looking almost exactly the same as it did previously is because I quickly realized when adding in details and trying to improve the structural capabilities of the building that it wasn't practical to have a section that was effectively cut off from the rest of it so I kind of reincorporated it into the rest of the build and it's also fortunate for any viewers who haven't seen that video previously to get a glimpse of how this is constructed on the front as well. Now one thing you'll notice that is different from the kind of foundation or kind of scaffolding that I had holding this up previously is I've decided to take a chunk out of one corner just to mix it up and add a little bit more architectural potential for the rest of the building as otherwise it would be this kind of squared off building that would just be a little bit boring. So you'll see more of what I do with that later on as we get higher up towards the roof. But in that space on this ground floor, I just put in a small simple little garden carrying the same kind of aesthetic that we find in between the tracks everywhere else over towards the garden where the kind of dark muted green colors help make it look like it's shaded and kind of just forgotten back here. And there's also a small water butt in that garden, which you'll see is later on used for the drain pipe that comes down this side of the building. This building is actually kind of unusual compared to the rest as I decided to go ahead and use the correct color around the entire building as I do have a habit of using, you know, maybe some leftover gray bricks that I have to replace say the tan bricks as I wouldn't have many of them. But the reason I decided to go ahead and do this all the correct color is because on the corners of this building, I have this kind of staggered 
brick pattern detail, which you'll see on a lot of different buildings. And it kind of required me to just go ahead and pull the trigger on using other bricks. Otherwise it would have looked a little bit quirky. So that's why that turned out as it did. For the remaining floors, I headed over to my desk and started working on them over here. And you can see the very first thing I did was create the floor itself, the kind of foundation, which is the shape of the building, which actually carries consistently all the way up. And I made three of them so that I could build each floor off of. And these floors are very similar to the ground floor. Honestly, until you get to the roof, they're pretty much copying the pattern that goes upwards. And to divide off these kind of very similar looking floors, you'll notice that on the top edge around the building, I have these modified bricks, which just add a little detail accent. You'll see this on all kinds of buildings, you know, especially Lego ones. If you don't have this different color plate line going throughout the building, it's nice to add a kind of nice trim so that you can visualize where the different floors are. The only difference that you'll see between these two floors that I'm creating later on in the second floor is that I've got a couple of attachments for the gutter and details of that nature on that floor, otherwise this one is effectively a clean slate. As we get to the final floor which also acts as the roof, I decided to construct it slightly differently than I usually do in these videos where instead of building everything brick for brick, as this is a more complicated floor which I would have had to pre-design and then take apart and have to rebuild on camera, I decided to leave it into some large sections that I could fit together on camera just to show you the basics of how this is constructed as it's very similar to the rest of the build. And as I'm putting this together, I will point out a few details that I really love about this. One of them being the minifigure legs that I used along the rim of the roof. This is a really fun detail and it creates a really unique shape that you usually don't see 
in builds and the other being the boarded off window that I've got to one side of the build. You always see these beautiful old buildings that have just been disgraced by somebody who's come along and boarded it up with some bricks or some wood which completely ruins the aesthetic of the build and uh, I wanted to kind of mirror that here in this as it's one of those details that I guess you wouldn't usually think of adding into your city but it's something that you just see on a day-to-day -day basis all the time and uh, stuff like that I love adding into my city. And then of course I finally added in the gutter as well. 
this is made up of two main sections. It would have been nice to do four for each of the floors, but it would have made constructing it a little bit less clean as uh, the pieces that I'm using for this wouldn't have lined up and uh, this just worked out to be the best method. And then I've also added in this little kink in the drain pipe around one of the pipes sticking out of the buildings as you always get these funny quirks in old buildings and uh, I thought it'd be fun to do. And with that, that is this entire build complete. I have to say, I'm quite used to seeing it in the city as the facade has been here for so long, but the impact that filling in the rest of the bulk of this building makes in the city is really massive when you see it in person. As I said with the skyscraper, it really helps the city feel more full and it's starting to enable me to envision what this is going to look like when it's finished, which makes me really excited to continue working on this city. But that is all I have for today's video. I'm going to leave you with a shot of this little section that I'm going to start working on soon. Let me know if you can work out what this is going to be. But anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.